Okay, so Samsung has just announced the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. I think, I think that's all there is to it. Uh, so let's talk about what it is, what it isn't, is it for you, all those kinds of things. Let's do it right now. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech Tech, so honest it hurts. Today, today, Samsung has given us the long awaited deets on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G, the brand new folding phone that is the uh, the, the new version of the first folding phone that Samsung came out with. It folds like this, uh, you know, sort of like a book. Uh, we'll go through some of the details. We'll go through some of the, some of the features, etc., etc. We'll talk about that kind of stuff. And then, and then we'll do a little bit of talking about who this is for and, and what this is all about. So let's first talk about those details. Now, one of the big problems that people had with the original Galaxy Fold was that the front screen was a little too small and it was difficult to use and you couldn't really use it unless you, you, you couldn't really do anything unless you opened up the phone. But now they've got a 6.2 inch screen on the front, which makes it bigger and it's, it, you can do your own thing on it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And it's also, I guess a 60 hertz screen, but, but what do you want? What do you want? Really? I mean, 60 hertz screen on the front. Uh, it's got its own little own little Infinity O camera in there. So this should be much more functional than what we've seen in the past. Now inside we have 7.6 inches of the screen real estate, <laughs> which is I think bigger than like bigger than an iPad Mini. Uh, <laughs> It's, that's a lot of screen real estate. Uh, it's it's just an intense amount of screen real estate. Infinity O display uh, camera on there as well, as well as 120 hertz refresh rate. Now this, like the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, is 120 hertz available at 1080p, and then at 1440, you can only do the 60 hertz. Uh, why they've done this is obviously for uh, for battery, um, for battery life and that kind of thing, but I still don't understand why that has to be the case. At any rate, they've got the ultra thin glass that they use. The glass, I, I guess it's glass. They say it's glass uh, from the Z Flip that they released earlier this year, so that's cool. Uh, the cover glass is Gorilla Glass Victus, which I don't really know what Victus means usually there's a number but there's not a number this time and on the back it's a gorilla glass six so why they didn't use victus well i don't know maybe maybe victus is expensive anyway so is the phone it's got an aluminum frame to it so all of the all of the everything's housed around this aluminum frame which is nice uh it's got a fingerprint reader on the frame, which I also like because, you know, there's no physical fingerprint reader on these devices anymore. It's all under the screen. And I'm still a big fan of the physical fingerprint reader. So the Galaxy Z Flip 2 has a physical fingerprint reader. So that's pretty cool. It comes in two colors, Mystic Black, the Mystic Bronze, that is all the rage this year. The Mystic Bronze is another color and it has a matte finish like the Note 20 Ultra does. And I do like this matte finish even though I don't really like the Mystic Bronze color. It's got a smaller gap in the hinge. I mean, basically they fine tuned just about everything about the, the flip now or the fold. No, yeah, I'm just gonna call it the fold, or the fold two. I'm just gonna call it the fold two because otherwise I get confused with Z Flip and other things. They've refined just about everything else. They've taken uh, they've taken uh, the the hinge mechanism that was on the Z Flip and used it here. And it's got some kind of brushes and without having it in my hands, it's really hard to say what it actually looks like. But it also will have a flex mode this time around, which means that you can unfold it and then sort of place it on your desk and and like. You know, if you place it on your desk, it'll be folded up here. Maybe you can like read or you know, type or something like that. But you can also take photos with that and preview the photos down here below. So 
The flex mode is pretty cool. That's one thing that I've liked a good bit about the dual screen devices like the LG V60, the LG Velvet, those kinds of things, is that you do get that opportunity to have something on one side and something on the other side. You can also get a lot more sort of multitasking going. You can get th up to three apps on there. You can have two instances of two apps, or of the same app, that is. So if you want to have web pages comparing one another, then you can have two instances of the web pages open. Microsoft is working with Samsung to get the apps, uh, the Microsoft apps to work in a similar way, so that's good. You've got wireless decks, so if you've got a, a mirror cast capable screen, you can do that as well as hook up a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know how many people have a mirror cast screen, but Maybe you can tell me down in the uh, comments below. We'll, we'll have that discussion. In terms of the camera, it seems like it's very similar to the Note 20 in the specs. It's 12 megapixel everything. Not very much in terms of zoom. There's not 108 times zoom. There's not any kind of craziness like this. It's a very, it's a very basic camera, no 8K video. I would rather, if, if they're gonna sell this device for what they're gonna sell it for, I would rather that they, you know, just have a really solid camera that's gonna do its thing without all these fancy bells and whistles. Like I said, you can you can set it on the table and take pictures and then you can you can preview those pictures down below. It sounds like it's gonna be a pretty cool camera interface. Now they also have the pro video mode that is on the Samsung phones right now, so, so you'll be able to take over control of all the stuff, and that's good. In terms of hardware specs, other than you know, what, what the phone's made of and, and all its dimensions and that kind of thing, we've got Snapdragon 865 Plus, and that's gonna be worldwide for everyone. So those of you who have really been complaining a lot in the comments, and I, and, and I get it, that the Exynos chip that Samsung is uh, using elsewhere other than the United States is just not not very good. You won't have to worry about that with the Galaxy Fold 2, Z Fold 2 5G. You won't have to worry about that. You'll get the Snapdragon 865, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, perfectly fine. That's the only storage that's, that's available. You can't get 512, there's no expandable storage. If this is the trade-off that we have to have in order for this device to hit the price point that they're trying to hit, then I, then I, I don't know, I guess it's a decent trade-off. I mean, you tell me, because I'm not sure who the market for this phone really is. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Um, it's got a 4,500 milliamp hour battery inside, which is the same as the, as the Note 20 Ultra, but it seems small to me. It seems small to me to drive a seven inch, seven and a half inch screen that's got 120 hertz, as well as another screen on the back and all that kind of stuff. It'll be interesting to see what the battery life is like on this phone, because it just seems like 4,500 milliamp hours might be a little too small, but, I can't, I can't really say. I would have to have the phone in my hands and to use it for a while, and I don't honestly know if that's gonna happen. The kicker here, the, the end result of all of this, is that from the standpoint of the Galaxy Fold to the Galaxy Fold 2, I have to admit that they've made a ton of improvements, that it seems like a much more solid device, that they have refined it down to something that probably comes up to the level of of being worth, I don't know about worth, but worth the amount of money that they're asking. Now, I thought that this was gonna be a $2,500 phone. That's really what I thought. Other people thought 22 or 23. We've been talking about it for a while. What's it gonna be? Well, it, Samsung has come in at $2,000, which sounds like a bargain price compared to where we thought we were gonna be when it, when it was first you know bandied about. You get more for that money, you get more screen, you get more features, you get more blah, blah, blah. No S Pen, I still really, I still really am not as interested in the Fold until it has S Pen capability, but be that as it may, that's something for another time. $2,000. So I put this to you. Who is, who is really the market for this phone? Obviously it's not the everyday average phone consumer. There are so many things that you can do with $2,000 that 
in this day and age, the, the way things are going, $2,000 could go a long way toward a lot of different things, and maybe that doesn't matter to you. You'll let me know down in the comments. Maybe having this phone is what you need to have in order to... I, I don't... I don't know. $2,000 is a crazy amount of money. $1,300 is a crazy amount of money. $1,000 for this is a crazy amount of money. But that's where we are. And... At $2,000 instead of $2,500, I guess the Galaxy Z Flip 2 5G is a bargain? Let's talk down in the comments below. Are you going to get one? Are you interested in seeing one? I, I kind of want to get one because I've talked a lot about these things, but I haven't actually had one to use myself. So I kind of want to get one, but that asking price is huge. And honestly, I don't know if I can, if I can do it. I, I don't know if I can come up with that kind of scratch. I know a lot of other people, a lot of other YouTubers have just already pre-ordered theirs and everything else, but hey, you know, it's just the reality of, you know, my life. I, I don't know if I can come up with that kind of scratch to, uh, to, to get the phone, but if you really want me to, tell me down in the comments and I will do everything that I can to make that happen. So, once again, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G flippity flop, whatever it is, uh, $2,000 for what seems to be a much better, much more well-considered, much more refined version of the Galaxy Fold that we had last year. Um, anxious to see what you guys think down in the comments. $2,000 is a crazy amount of money. I don't know if anybody should spend it, but if you're going to spend it, tell me why. Once again, thanks so much for being here. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JDL. This is a painfully honest tech. Tech, so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.